the bloody men of that can report as seen by his plight of the revolt the new estate. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, great friend, say to the king the knowledge of the world, as thou didst leave it. Doubtful, sir. As two censors and two things together in token our arms. The merchants of Donwall, worthy to see a rebel report that the multiplying villainies and nature of these sorrow conquered, from the western isles of Kerr and the Galaxy supplied. A force on a stand, quarrel smiling, shows like a rebel sword. But all oh, too weak for brave as that. But he deserves that name to save fortune. With his branch steel, which smoke, smoke for the execution, like the Palatine carved that passage to face the slave, which never can nor paid for well to him, see unseen him for the names of the chops, and fix his head upon our battlements. Oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentlemen. As when the sun begins his reflection, she presses storm and dire upon his break. From that spring when comfort seems to come, discomfort swells. Mark, the king of the sovereign, Mark, no sooner justice had compelled these secret friends to trust their heels. But the Norwegian wars of advantage, for which all our new supplies of men began a fresh assault. Display not this our captain to the best and vanquish. Yes, a sparrow's eagle or the head line. If I say to you, they must support. They were as cannon overcharged with double cracks. So he helped these redoubled chokes upon the foe. But I am the I have to try for help. So well, thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack a bonnet ball. Go get him, sir. Who comes here? The words he's saying of Ross. What a haste look through his eyes. So should he look and see what's strange. God save the king. What's taking us that word of thing? From fight, great king, where no region banners, love the sky and bear our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cordova, began a dismal conflict. So that Bologna's bridegroom, laughed and proof, confronted with self-contradictions, Point against point, rebellious arm against arm, curve is that spirit, and conclude, victory fell on us. Great happiness. No more that thing of Carter shall receive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title, Great Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. Tell me more. 
Like Simon said, I know I am a thing of God, but how of God? The thing of God to live is prosperous gentlemen, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be caught or. Satan was you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop her away with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you! The earth hath foes, as the water has. These are of them. Whither they vanish? Into the air, and what seems to fall will melt to this breath into the wind. Would they have saved? For such things here as we do speak about, have we eaten on the insane root that takes the risen grave? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And if you call it too, went it not so? To the self same tune in words. Who's here? The king hath happy received me, Ben. News of thy success. I am sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, and for an his greater honor. He bade me from him call thee Thane of Cottle, in which addition, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is I. What? Can the devil speak true? Thane of Cottle lives. Why do you dress me and borrow robes? Who is the Thane lives yet, and under heavy judgment bears the life which he deserves to lose? Treat his capital, confess and prove, have overthrown him. Longs, and Thane of Cottle, the grace is kind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the Thane of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? That trusted home may yet enkindle you unto the crown of Thane of Cawdor, but tis strange, and oftentimes, the when us to our arms, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, when us with honest rifles betray us in deepest hostiles. Cousin, a word, I pray you. Two truths are told, this happy prologue, the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, noble Ross. Ill cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am thin of power. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose word image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastic, will shake so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our heart is wrecked. Chance will have me king, why? Chance may crown me without my stir. New honors come upon him, like our strange garments. Leave not their gold to the aid of youth. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worthy as my best, be safe on your leisure. Give me your faith. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered for every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and add more time, the interim having waited. Let us speak our free hearts, each to other. Very well. To live enough. Come, friends. Sorrows, hide defiance. 
Let not might see my black and deep desires. Let the eye weak in the hand, yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. Love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my thing, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. We're welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. CC, our honored hostess. All our service in every point twice done, then done double, were poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. For those of old and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. But where's the Thane of Cawdor? We course him at his heels and had a purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well, and his great love, as sharp as his spur, hath hold him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever have theirs, themselves in what is theirs, in Cobb, to make their audit at your highness's pleasure, still to return your own. Give me your hand. Conduct me to mine host. We love him highly and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. If it were done when tis done, then twere well if it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, but that this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here. But here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases we have judgment here, though we but teach bloody instructions, which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then is his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, the 
As Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spurs to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls upon the other. How now? What news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which should be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk when you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such as I count thy love, art thou feared to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemest the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat in the adage? Prithee, peace. I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was it, then, that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you'd be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make them both. They have made themselves, and their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums, and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? We fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey sadly invite him, his two chamberlains will I, with wine and with sail, so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lies in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers, who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received? We have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive a tether, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what a false heart doth know. <laughs> How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take it tis later, sir. Hold. Take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. Their candles are all out. Take thee that, too. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain me in the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's abed. He hath been an unusual pleasure and sent forth great largest to your offices. This diamond he greets your wife withal, by the name of the most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect, which else should free have wrought. All's well. I tramped last night with the three weird sisters. To you they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. If you shall cleave to my consent when tis, it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle towards my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. 
Now o'er the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered murder, alarmed by a sentinel, the wolf, who howls his watch thus with his steady pace. With Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm said earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prayed of my whereabout, and take the present whore from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives, and words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go and it is done, the bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What quenched them hath given me fire. Hark! Peace. It was the owl that shrieked, the fatal bellman that gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open, and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets, that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? What? Ho! Alack, I'm afraid they have awakened, and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confound us. Hark! I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I'd done it. I've my done husband. I've done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owls scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. Hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Donalbane. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. This one did laugh in his sleep and run quiet murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. They are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with these hangmen's hands. Listening their fears, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deep. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more, Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, death of each day's life, sore labor's bath, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still he cried, sleep no more to all the house. Gloms hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more! Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again. I dare not. Infirm of purpose, give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? What hands are these? Ha! They pluck out mine eyes! Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand, rather the multitudinous seas in incarnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy it is then. Your constancy hath left you unattended. Hark, more knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost, so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, t'were best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking! I would thou couldst! Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter of Hellgate, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock. Who's there? In the name of Beelzebub. Here's a farmer that hanged himself in the expectation of plenty. Come in time. Have napkins now about you. Here you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock. Who's there? In the other devil's name. Faith. Here's an equivocator who could swear in both the scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, you cannot equivocate to heaven. I'll come in, equivocator. Knock, knock. Who's there? Faith, an English tailor, come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knock, knock, knock. Never at quiet. What are you? For this place is too cold for hell. 
I'll devil porter it no further. I thought to let in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon, I pray you, remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him and it mars him. It sets him on and it takes him off. It persuades him and disheartens him. It makes him stand to and not stand to. And in conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the lie leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. <laughs> that it did, sir. I the very throat on me, but I required him for his lie. And I think being too strong for him, though he took up my leg some time, I made a shift to cast him. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking awakens him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy Dane? Not yet. He did command me to call on him timely. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Goes the king hence today. He does. He did appoint so. Oh, horror, horror, horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Confusion now hast made its masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hast broke up. The Lord's anointed temple, and so thence the life of the building. What is it to say, the life? Means you, His Majesty? Approach thy chamber and destroy your sight, but the new Gorgon do not bid me speak. See then, speak yourselves. Awake, awake! Ring the alarm bell, murder and treason. Banco on Donalbane, Malcolm, awake! Shake off this downy sleep, death's counterfeit, to look upon death itself. Up, up, and see the great doom's image. Malcolm and Banquo, us from your graves rise up and walk like sprites to countenance this horror. Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to Parley, the sleepers of the house? Speak, speak! Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition of woman's ear would murder as it fell. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Whoa, alas! What, in our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duck, I prithee contradict myself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant there is nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys, renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn and the mere lees is left this vault to brag of. What is amiss? You are and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chambers, it seems, had done it. Their hands and faces were all bashed with blood. Oh, that I do repent me of my fury, that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal, neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition of my violent love outran the pause or reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gash stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There. The murderers steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in his heart, courage to make his love known? Help me hence hope! Look to the lady! Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? What should be spoken here, where our fates, hid in an auger hole, may rush and seize us? Let's away, our tears are not yet brewed. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer an exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence against undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So, so all. all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet at the hall together. Well, well contended. contended. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To Ireland I. Our separate fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are now, there's daggers in men's smiles. The nearer in blood, the nearer bloody. This murder shaft that's shot have not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, to horse, and let us not be dainty in leave-taking, but shift away. There is warrant in the theft that steals itself, when there is no mercy left. Hours dreadful. Things strange. 
The heavens troubled with man's act. Dark night strangles the traveling land. Night's predominance or the day's shame. Darkness does the face of earth in two. This bloody stage is unnatural. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth has slain. Alas, the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned, Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are thrown away and fled, which puts upon them suspicious of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He has already been named and gone to Scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Colmkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardians of their bones. Will you to Scone? No, cousin. I'll to Fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things done well there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell. God's venison go with you, and with those who would make good of bad and friends of foes. Thou hast it now. King, Cawdor, Gloms, all, as the weird women promised. And I fear thou played most foully for it. Yet it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why, but by the verity of thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope? But hush, no more. He was our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me to which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. Rides you this afternoon? I, my good lord. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and Ireland, not confessing their cruel parasites, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when therewithal we will cause of state craving us jointly. Hide a horse, adieu. Goes Fleance with you. Aye, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot and commend you to their backs. Farewell. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears in bank will stick deep, and in that royalty of his nature reigns that which will be feared. Tis much he dares. And to that dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked. As it is said, Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when they first put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then prophet-like, they held him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip, then to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue I have filed my mind, for them the gracious Duncan I have murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings! Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to utterance. Who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, your highness. Well then, now have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he which in times past hath held you so under fortune that you had thought of in our instant self. This I made good to you in our last conference, passed in probation with you, how you were born in hand, how cross the instruments and who wrought them, and all things else that to half a soul in an ocean crazed, say thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? I am one, my liege whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed I am reckless what I do despite the world. And I am mother, so weary with disaster, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or to be rid of it. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, True my, my lord. lord. So is he mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against the nearest of my life. And though I could, with bare-faced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will about you, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop but wail his fall, who I myself struck down. Thence it is that to your assistance I do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry, weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives... Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour at most I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the 
perfect spy of the time, the moment on it, for it must be done tonight. And something from the past. Always thought that I require a clearness with him, Leonce, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, I'll come to you anon. We are, we are resolved, resolved, my lord. lord. I'll call upon you straight, abide within. It is concluded, Banquo. Thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Is Banquo gone from court? Aye, madam, but returns again tonight. Say to the king I would attend his leisure for a few words. Madam, I will. Nots had all spent, for our desires got without content. To safer to be that which we destroy, than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord, why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which indeed should have died with them they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it, ere we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams which shake us nightly. Better to be with the dead whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Come on, gentle, my lord, sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. So shall I, love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence, both with eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must lave our honors to these flattering streams and make our faces visards to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave it. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. But in them nature's copy not eterm. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. And thou be jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with a bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvelest at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee, go with me. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day, now spurs the lated traveler apace, to gain a timely inn and near approaches, the subject of our watch. Hark, I hear horses, tis he. Stand to it. It will be rain tonight. Let it come ah. down. Ah. 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 Fly to fly! fly. <clears throat> There's but one down. The sun is fled. We've lost the best half of our affair. Well, let's away and say what's done. You know your own degrees, sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks, Thanks to your, your majesty. majesty. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks they are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their heart's thanks. Both sides are even. Here all sit in the mist. Be large in mirth. Anon, we'll drink a measure of the table round. There's blood on my face. Tis bank woes, then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut that I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet he's good that did the like for Fleance. If thou didst it, thou art the non parel Most royal sir, Fleance escaped. Then comes my fit again! I had else been perfect, whole as marble, founded as rock, as broad and general as the casing air. But now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound in to saucy doubts and fears. But bank was safe. I, my good lord, safe in a ditch he bides, with twenty trench gashes on his head, the least to death's to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies, the worm that's fled hath nature, that in time will venom breed, no teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. Sweet remembrancer. Now, 
Good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness sit. Here had we now our country's honor roofed for the grace person of our banquo present, who I may rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. May it please your highness, grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it! Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise, his highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep the seat. Feed, and regard him not. Are you a man? I, and a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff! This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger that you said led you to Duncan. Shame itself! Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. Prithee, see there! Behold, look low! How say you? Why, what care I? If thou canst nod, speak too. If charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be the maws of kites. What, quite unmanned in folly? If I stand here, I saw him. Fie for shame! Blood hath been shed ere now, with the golden time, and human statute purged the gentle wheel. I and sense two murders have been performed too terrible for the ear. The times had been that when the brains were out, the men would die and there an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine, fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here. To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Avaunt, and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom, tis no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare I dare? Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the arm rhinoceros or the hearken tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves will never tremble. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe when you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and may better health attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Augurs and understood relations have by maggot pies and chuffs and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way. I will tomorrow, and betimes I will, to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way, for I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go o'er. Strange things I have in head, but will to hand, which must be acted or they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, not to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Hour is dreadful. Things strange. The heavens troubled with man's act. Dark night strange with the trapping land. Night's predominance or the day's shame. Darkness does the face of earth and tame. This bloody stage is unnatural.
thrice the brinded cat hath mewed, thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harp your cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go, in the poisoned entrails throw, toad that under cold stone days and nights has thirty-one, sweltered venom sleeping got, boil thou first in the charmed pot. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake, in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt, toe of frog, wool of bat, tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, maw and gulf, of the raven, salt sea shark, root of hemlock, digged in the dark. Add thereto a tiger's charge, and for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A, a deed, deed without, without a name. name. I conjure you by that which you profess. Howe'er you come to know it, answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. Will answer. Say if thou'dst rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them, let me see them. Come, come high or low, low thyself in office deftly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thoughts. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth, 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 beware Macduff, beware the thing of fight. Dismiss me, and not. Whate'er thou art for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear right, but one word more. He will not be commanded. Here's another more potent than the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Had I three ears, I'd hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of women born shall harm Macbeth. And live, Macduff, what need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but speak not to it! We lie in metal to crowd and take no care. We chase who frets or where conspires are. Macbeth shall never vanquish to be until great Burnham Wood, to hide Dunn's name hill, shall come against him. That will never be who can impress the forest, bid the tree unfix his earthbound root. Sweet bodement's good. Rebellions had rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high-placed Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, pay his breath to time and mortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, will Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more! I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Show! 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart! Come like shadows, so depart! Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down! Thy crown to sear mine eyeballs. Horrible sight! Now I see tis true, for the blood boltered Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his! What? Is this so? Aye, sir. All this is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer we up his sprites, and show the best of our delights, that this great king may kindly say our duties did his welcome pay. Where are they? Gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there. Seaton! What is your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who was it came by? Twas two or three, my good lord, that bring you word that Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. Time, thou anticipatest my dread exploits. The flighty purpose has ne'er or took unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. 
and even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done, the castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool, this deed I'll do before this purpose cool. But no more sights. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his titles, in a place from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. All is the fear and nothing is the love. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease. I take my leave at once. <sighs> Sirrah, your father's dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What, with worms and flies? With what I can get, I mean, and so do they. <laughs> Poor bird, thou hast never fear the net nor lime, the pitfall nor the gin. Why should I, mother? Poor birds they are not set for. My father is not dead for all your sake. Yes, saying. he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? <laughs> Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him and sell again. Thou speaks with all thy wit. Yet, in faith, with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors do that so? Every one that does so is a traitor, and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools. For there are liars and swearers and now to beat the honest men and hang them up. <laughs> no, God help thee, poor monkey. But how wilt thou do for a father? If my father were dead, he'll weep. If you would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Poor Prattler, how thou talkest. What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayst find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, shag-haired villain! No! 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 no. He has no. killed me, mother! Murder! Let us seek out some desolate shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men bestride our downfall and birthdom. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland, and yells out like a syllable of dolor. What I believe, I'll wail, what no believe, and when I can redress, as I shall find the time to friend, I will. This tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongue was once thought honest. You have loved him well. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. I have lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I find my doubts. Lead, bleed, poor country. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. Not in the legions of hoard hell can come a devil more damned and evil to top Macbeth. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. Thy royal father was the most sainted king, and the queen that bore thee, oftener on her knees than on her feet, died every day she lived. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains have sought to win me, and to his power and modest wisdom plucks me from over-credulous haste. But God above deal between thee and me. For even now I put myself to thy direction. What I am truly is thine, and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed, before thy here approach, old Seward with his ten thousand warlike men, already at a point, was setting forth. Now we'll together, and our chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. See, who comes here? My countryman, yet I know him not. Stands Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave, where nothing but who knows nothing is seen once to smile. 
Where sighs, groans, and shrieks that rend the air are made, not marked, and violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy. The dead man's knell is there scarce asked for whom, and good man's lives expire before the flowers in their caps, dying where they sicken. Oh, relation too nice and yet too true. What's the newest grief? Out of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker, with each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, for they will possess with them the heaviest sound that they have ever heard. If it be mine, do not keep it from me. Quickly let me have it. Your castle is surprised, your wife and babe savagely slaughtered, to relate the manner where, on the quarry of those murdered deer, to add the death of you. Merciful heaven, what man, nor pull your hat upon your brow, to give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the o'erfraught heart and bids it break. My children too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence, my wife killed too? I have said. Let's make us medicine of our great revenge, to cure this deadly grief. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things that were so precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, for they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not from their own demerits, but for mine fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whitstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. Cut short all intermission, front to front. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself within my sword's length. If he escape, heaven forgive him too. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking. And the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. I have two nights watch with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I've seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, and afterwards seal it, and again return to bed, yet all this while in a most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature, to receive at once the benefits of sleep and do the effects of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what, at any time, have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You may to me, and tis most meet you should. Neither to you nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? Look, how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I've known her to continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Oh, damn spot out, I say! One, two, why, tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? Do you mark that? The Thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? What, will this hand ne'er be clean? No more that, my lord, no more that. You mar all with the starting. Go to, go to, you have known what you should not. She spoke what she should not, I'm sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Here's the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh, oh, oh! What a sigh there. The heart is sorely charged. I would not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. I pray God be it, sir. This disease is beyond my practice, yet I've known of those which have walked in their sleep who have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out on his grave. Even so? To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds, their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets. More need she the divine than the physician. God, God forgive us all. Look after her. Remove from her the means of all annoyance, and still keep eyes upon her. So good night. My mind, she is mated, and amaze my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor.
tower is near, led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Near Burnham Wood shall we well meet them. That way are they coming. What does the tyrant? Great Dunstan name he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad, others that lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. He will not buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murder sticking on his hands. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. His title now hangs loose around his neck, like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Who then shall blame his pestered senses to recoil and start when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? Well, march we on to give obedience where tis truly owed. Make we our march towards Burnham. Bring me no more reports, let them fly off, till Burnham would remove to Dunsinane I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, false thanes, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. The devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon! Where got thou that goose look? There are ten thousand. Geese, villain? Soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lily-livered boy. What soldiers? Patch. Death of thy soul! Those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers, wayface? The English force so please you. Take thy face hence. Satan! I am sick at heart when I behold. Satan, I say! This patch shall cheer me ever or deceive me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the seer. The yellow leaf and that which should accompany old age is honor. Love, obedience, troops of friends I must not look to have but in their stead curses. Not loud but deep, mouth honor, breath, which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not. Seaton! What is your gracious pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. It is not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scur the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. How does thy patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she's troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of it. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased, pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet, oblivious antidote cleanse that stuffed bosom of the perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart? Therein the patient, my lord, must minister to himself. Throw physic to the dogs, all none of it. Come, put mine armor on. Give me my sword. Seton, send out. Doctor, the thanes fly from me. Come, sir, dispatch. Thou couldst, Doctor. Cast the water of my land, find her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health. I would applaud thee to the very echo that would applaud again. Aye, my good lord. Your royal preparation makes us hear something. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. Were I from Dunsinane away and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bough and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shatter the numbers of our hosts and make discovery ere in report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other, but the competent tyrant keeps still in Dunsinane and will endure our setting down before it. Tis his main hope, for where there's advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but constrained things, whose hearts are absent too. Let our just censures attend the true event and put beyond industrious soldiership. The time approaches that will with due decisions make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Hang our banners on the outward walls, the cry is still, they come. Our castle strength laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine and the og you eat them up. Were they not met with those that should be ours, we would have met them dareful, beard to beard, and beat them backward home. <coughs> what was that noise? It is the cry of women, my good lord. I have almost forgot the taste of fears. The time had been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek, and my fell of hair and a dismal treatise would rouse and stir as life were in it. I have supped full with horrors. Direness familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. 
there would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thy comest to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious, my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to say it. Well, say, sir. As I did stand watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and anon methought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath, if to be not so, Within this three mile may you find a moving grove. If thou speakest false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive till famine cling thee. If thy speech is sooth, I care not if thou dost for me as much. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham Wood come to Dunsinane. And now a wood comes toward Dunsinane. Arm, arm, and out. If this which he avouches does appear, there is no flying hence nor tearing here. I begin to be weary of the sun and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell, blow wind, come rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. Now near enough, your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff, and we shall take upon us what else remains to do according to our order. Fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath. Those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. They have tied me to a stake I cannot flay, but bear like I must fight the course. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one I am to fear, or none. What is thy name? Thou will be afraid to hear it. No, though thou call thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest to poor tyrant. With my sword I will prove the lie thou speakest. Uh, 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 uh. Thou wast born of woman, but swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn, brandished by a man that's of a woman born. That way the noises. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou be slain by no stroke of my own, then my wife and children's ghost will haunt me still. I shall not strike at wretched currents whose arms are hired to bear their staves. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbattered edge I sheath again, undeeded. There thou shouldst be by this great clatter when of greatest note seems brooded. Let me find in fortune, and more I beg not. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, hellhound, turn! Of all men else I have avoided thee. But get thee back! My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword, thou bloodier villain. Then terms can give thee out! <laughs> <laughs> Thou losest labor, as easy mayest thou the entrench in air with thy keen sword and presses make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair. 
There is thy charm, let the angel that thou still hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. A curse should be the tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man. And be these juggling fiends that palter with us in a double sense, that keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope, I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze all the time. We'll have thee as our rare monsters are, paint on a pole and underwrit. Here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, or be baited with the rabble's curse. Though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and thou opposed being of no woman born, yet I must try the last. Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on Macduff, and damn be him that first cries, old enough! Ah! 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 we miss were safe arrived. Some must go off, and yet by these I see, so great a day as this is cheaply bought. Macduff is missing, and your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He lived only but till he was a man. Then he is dead? Aye, and brought off the field. Let not your cause of sorrow be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Why then, God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I have hairs, I would not wish them to a fairer death. And so, his knell is nulled. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. He's worth no more. They say he parted well and paid his score. And so, God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Hail, King, for so thou art behold where stands the usurper's cursed head. For the time is free, and then compass thy kingdom's pearl who speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire to hear loud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, Hail King, King of, of Scotland. Scotland! We shall not spend a large expensive time before we reckon with your several loves. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth we earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad, that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who as tis thought by self in violent hands, took off her life. This and what needful else, which calls upon us by the grace of grace. We'll perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once and to each one whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone. <laughs> 